Hello my soccer universe to a review that is long long overdue but with late games being played yesterday evening I have to do it now. Uh, just quickly for the arrangement as you know I usually look at who had the best improvements overall and um, Porto among the four Portuguese teams that I have has had the best record over the past three weeks. Uh, similar Mallorca is the one with the best improvement and Barcelona next. Real Madrid would not have made the wall. Except I put them up there because they won the Club World Cup and that's why you find Real Madrid right there in the center and the Club World Cup will be something that we'll be talking about. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. Same. I mean, not much has changed up top of the of the table. Barcelona have now an even bigger advantage. Maybe that's the one big change, thanks to Real Mallorca. And this is an advantage that never has been overcome in La Liga. So Barcelona are definitely set to become a um, the new Spanish champions. However, I gotta say, well, statistically, they look really, really well. And I mean, I, s I said it even in the last video that uh, they are really hard to beat. They have an excellent defensive record, but when you watch them play, they don't pass the eye test for me. I mean, they're the best defense in Europe, which is very unbarcelona like They get one nil wins and, you know, if not Milan had now three one nil wins in, in, in a row, I probably would mock them a little bit and call it uh, Barcelona. But the stats speak for themselves. This is a really hard to beat team. I still feel it does not feel either Barcelona nor a great team. But it also maybe speaks for the rest of the league that, you know, when Real Madrid is taking a kind of having an off season, Barcelona have a free field to get in there. Uh, of course, we need to talk also about Sevilla making a little bit of return, but then uh, there's another big team that is now relegation threatened. It was Sevilla for half the season, now it's Valencia. Um, very interesting stuff. Over in Portugal, I think the big story is that it's now um, Porto keep themselves in contention. Braga uh, had a big upset in the cup, but it's still Benfica far and away. And Porto knocked more or less Sporting out of contention for the Champions League. So uh, it seems also a very a clear top three. But I want to start this one with the Club World Cup. Uh, you see all the results here where I think um, Al-Hilal were the biggest upset because first they uh, won with a little bit of luck against Vidat uh, from a uh, local Moroccan uh, champion. Uh, same thing Al-Ahli uh, against Seattle Sounders was also a little bit of a luck, luck giving, but those two make it into the semifinals where Al-Hilal pulls the big upset over Flamengo, a game that never went Flamengo's way. They quickly find themselves down through a penalty. Yes, they get the e e equalizer, but then give away another penalty that al is uh, converting. And in addition, they're manless and never having a chance after that. And uh, it's kind of, you know, all the preparation work that go in for Flamengo. They were all geared up for the big game against Real Madrid. And then you fall at the first hurdle. Um, this is shows the gap between Europe and the rest of the world. South America is maybe still second, but they're closer to the rest of the world than Europe. Hence, I think the a reform of the Club World Cup is needed. However, I'm not sure that the reform that we need is exactly the one that, that is coming. I actually would rather have that we have the other two winners of the European competitions competing in the Club World Cup. Potentially, you know, uh, expand it a little bit more, but not too much more. If you want to give four, then uh, maybe the league champion of the best um, of the best league in the UEFA ranking uh, that is not qualified three of the comp competitions would be another way to go to have maybe four European teams to make it a little bit more competitive. Of course, it needs to fit in into the calendar. Having said all that, it was then relatively easy for Real Madrid who didn't need to exert themselves a whole lot. Um, Vinny Jr. and Valverde set them already on a good path. Uh, against Alachli, yes, they pull one one back, but later on two stops, so we're gonna make it a proper scoreline. Flamengo a bounce back against Alachli, who have played every single round, which is also rather remarkable. And if the final was an overall entertaining affair with Real Madrid getting a very early 2-0 lead against uh, again 
Vinicius Junior and Valverde. Ah, uh, yes, Marega, Musa Marega. We know him from Porto. Pulls one back for Al Achli, but then as soon as Benzema makes it 3-1, everyone knew this is it. However, it would not have been up, so it was Valverde four minutes later making make, make forward. Then you had, then you were fearing a route. Vieto pulls one back, Vinicius Junior makes it 5-2, and then Vieto another one. So it was a, a really entertaining final, although I think this, as soon as Benzema made it, made it 3-1, there was only one winner, and Real Madrid get another title. They have now eight world titles uh, to their credit, which I think is the most of any team, given that Real Madrid have also the most Champions League. It's not all that surprising. And let's see what the future of the Club World Cup will hold from here out. Going over to Portugal, so let's leave Real Madrid a little bit aside. Going over to Portugal, I want to actually start with the Portuguese Cup because we had a major upset there with Braga ousting Benfica on penalties. Uh, Gedesh had given Benfica an early lead, but then Ba is sent off. And a little bit later, Al Musarati gets an equalizer. Then game goes back and forth and goes all the way to penalties, where you see that Benfica missed their fourth one despite starting the penalty shootout so a big home win for Braga who are now together with Porto the two uh, good sides that remain a little bit up to this Nacional uh, ousting also Casa Pia and then Family Cow against Belenenge we see, you see already the draw the dates are not quite fixed but the slots are kind of uh, fixed there it's Family Cow against Porto and Nacional against Braga so it looks like a Braga Porto final which I think even how the league league is going is quite interesting. Uh, in the league, not many upsets. I mean, you see Benfica over Casa Pia. That was just before the Cup of Braga. 4-1 over Fafa from Family Cao to kind of put in, in, in relation how good Family Cao is. Porto uh, getting actually as, as of late the wins, but it's never super high score lines. They just get it done. Just stay in there. And Benfica usually get the win as well so it's Porto and Bofica that kind of lift themselves away Braga you thought could hang in there but nah, it's not really um, always hap hap happening Sporting won against Rio Ave then we had a makeup game during the cup game so it's on the, low, the lower one Sturil against Boa Vista uh, then the previous weekend was all about Sporting against Porto which was as has so often been I, I've, I've been watching now this re regularly a rather even match with Porto just being more efficient. Uribe and Pepe getting the goals. Uh, I was egg, egg, egg actually a really interesting game because Sporting had a goal disallowed that would have been an eek, eek was for offside. Then uh, Pepe makes it 2-0. Uh, but then uh, Cermiti pulls again one back a few, few, few minutes later. So uh, despite I'm thinking 2-0, this is enough for, for Porto. Uh, it was a little bit closer, but over, over, overall it's again... Porto just being too efficient for Sporting and I have to say Ruben Amorim, he might have given the title to Sporting, but slowly I think he's running out of uh, tricks. The other two big uh, uh, guys, Benfica and Braga, of course, God wins. This was on the previous week, weekend and uh, past week, we weekend. Uh, again, uh, all wins for the big ones. Uh, we have Porto winning, we have Braga uh, winning. We have Sporting getting actually uh, a rather rough win against Chavez, although, you know, 1 0 down, 3 1 up, uh, and then 3 2. And also Benfica had to fight a little bit. Uh, um, it's, all the goals came, came in the second half. It was 1 1 at one point. Juan Mario misses a penalty, but uh, Gonzalo Ramos, of course. Then 2 1 sets Benfica well on the way. And then stoppage time. Winner there at a very late stage for European <laughs> for Central Europe at least for Austria uh, so as I said in the table not much has changed it's still very much Benfica I think it will come down to a head-to-head -head whether Porto can get back into it uh, but at the moment it's five points Braga also having a pretty good cushion over Sporting at the moment so they seem to go into Champions League uh, playoffs uh, similar stories we'll see of course it, it is on top it's very much clear it's one two three four five I think Casa Pia will not claim the sport for, uh, the spot from Vitoria de Guimarães who is probably the next Portuguese team that I should get on the bottom Santa Clara Maritimo and Passos now and you know it's always one freak team that that gets really relegated I love the midfield in the Portugal in Portugal because it is so level uh, unfortunately there's nothing to 
play for there. I give you also the next two rounds. I mean, we have Gimares against Braga. That's a pretty big one next um, Monday. Uh, that's a local door uh, derby. Other than that, I think uh, relatively straightforward um, matches. And then um, it's all on the next weekend. This is the fixtures, but they have not been fixed yet, which is a little bit annoying. But again, uh, not the big one there. Let's go over to what happened in Spain. And this is again three rounds uh, that we need to cover. Uh, Atletico Madrid against Getafe was kind of a freak 1-1 one, one, uh, result. Uh, Atletico Club 4-1 over Cadiz. Um, a big uh, result there too. Villarreal have been losing and losing and losing and losing as of, of late. They lose to Elche. This was the first win for Elche. Tells you how bad Villarreal is. All the Valencia teams are not really good. I think Elche is also in that uh, region. So uh, not good. Of course, the standard result is the 3-4 between Betis and Celta Vigo. What a crazy game that was uh, where uh, Larsen gives uh, Celta the lead. Then uh, Juan Mint Canales turn it around in the, by the 23rd. Velga gives Vigo uh, the lead, lead again. He extends the lead in the second half. It's even fourth, 2 to Aldu. Fekir then... Uh, uh, makes it a more palpable scoreline, uh, but there were actually quite a few chances for Betis in there as well. Absolutely wild game. Uh, wild one also at Mallorca, where Real Mallorca beat Real Madrid 1 0 through Fernandez' uh, uh, own goal and also a missed penalty by Asensio. And then there was, of course, uh, some unrest around Vinicius, which is just sad to see. Girona also building a pretty good home record, 1-0 uh, over Valencia and then another shocker where uh, Real Sociedad controlled via the lead left, left and right, but it's uh, Karl Lerin who gets the winner, Canadian guy, and again it's Karl Lerin uh, who gets it. So a uh, pretty big result uh, there. He, I think he, he has, a, he, at that point, he has not played all that much, but within a few minutes of getting onto the pitch, he scores. Uh, and I have rather positive seen that uh, Real Valladolid are on the way up. Uh, severe cold hold of Barca for quite a while. Sergio Busquets got uh, injured, so Kessier needed to come, come on. And he also then assisted the first goal by Alba. And from that moment on, all hell broke loose. And Gavi and Rafinha scored two more. And at that point, Barcelona, with Real Madrid losing, extend the lead to eight points. And never has a team with an eight-point lead not won the championship so uh this is what we're talking uh, about and it's again a clean sheet for barcelona in this game honestly um that was deserved but in most other other games for barca i always felt that the clean sheets are always a teeny bit uh lucky they get another clean sheet in their win uh away to uh via real a one nil through an early pedri goal uh again a game where yeah uh Villarreal was in there, however, Bar Barcelona get the job done. Uh, we had Sevilla getting back to winning ways with a 2 0 over Mallorca, uh, Valencia at home losing to Athletic Club, Atletico Madrid win against Celta Vigo, and you don't know how. I think there was a missed penalty for Vigo in there. Numerous chances, Atletico with a man less, uh, Savage being sent off, and then uh, Memphis scores the winner. Uh, this was one, a true freak result there. Uh, another entertaining game was, was of of course, uh, Real Sociedad's 3-2 win at Espanyol, uh, but it was a 3-0 lead in the 63rd. It, uh, it got a little bit tighter then to the end, but Carbarera also, also got sent off for Espanyol. Making the double, he scores an own goal and he's being sent off. Makes for a bad uh, day at work. And Elche cannot get a second win. Now Real Madrid just easily control, coming back with the new golden patch on there as the club world champions Asensio, Benzema scoring a penalty present, Luka Modric making it a proper scoreline easing over but it's typically Real Madrid it does not look convincing however the individual class shows through and then uh, they get the goals that they needed uh, and on this past weekend it started out with another really entertaining game 6-2 uh, Girona against Al 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 Real Sociedad consider late equal as to Celta Vigo. So Real Sociedad having kind of a rough stretch over those last three. I mean, um, 
in the last fi uh, five games. They won two, drew two, lost one. So kind of a little bit losing touch and letting Atleti back in who actually do get wins. Uh, Bet is top uh, via Dolitz's uh, uh, little surge. Uh, who had three unbeaten games stopped uh, with that one. Mallorca 4-2 over Villarreal, so a third loss for Villarreal, who are anything but good at this very, very moment, having lost four in a row in total. There's only one team that is worse, and, worse, and that's Valencia on the bottom. They have now five in a row, probably even more. Valencia is seriously relegation threatened at this moment. Um, Osasuna made it a tough task for Real Madrid, but again, individual class showing through. And it is Vinicius Jr. who is running a show. He assists Valverde, and then Asensio makes the second one after Vinicius' goal is called off. Um, Atletico Madrid had to fight with Athletic Bilbao. Uh, there was also a nice gesture because uh, Bilbao were celebrating uh, an, an anniversary. And since Atletico Madrid has been founded by students from Bilbao, and there's a kind of a kinship, Atletico allowed Bilbao to wear the home colors uh, in Madrid, which meant that Atletico played in the really weird orange ones. Add to that the pink hair of Griezmann, and it was kind of a cacophony of colors. Griezmann getting the winner and you just could see that he is just better than anyone else on the Atleti squad. Big one for Atletico Madrid because at halftime it uh, looked a little bit differently to be honest. When you look at the box score for Barcelona against Cardiff, a game that I watched while recording the Premier League. Ruben, of course, the two goals were scored while I was shooting them. Sergio Roberto and Lewandowski scoring uh, just before the half. Lewandowski probably should have, should have scored both. Um, and you think, yeah, and that's it. And Cadiz is not coming back. But there was a little bit more. There was a rather contentious uh, goal disallowed because of a supposed foul on uh, Ter Stegen, which I didn't understand. Uh, Celta actually created chances. And again, it's Barcelona. Yes, again, they have a clean sheet, but it doesn't look like they are a team that's defensively solid. Uh, on the other side, Xavi did everything right. He gave some players that needed a rest a rest. He got uh, Lewandowski, who hasn't scored. He got back on, on the scoring sheet. So in that sense, all well done. Okay, we already said Barcelona, eight points clear. It's 90-10 at the moment. It's really hard. And Barcelona have the second best record in Europe at this very moment. Only Napoli is doing better. Uh, however, Napoli looks super exciting in every regard. It's not something I can say about Barcelona, but you know, not conceding goals and on average they win a uh, game by 2-0. That's the new Barcelona and probably something to build on. Uh, it will be really hard for Real Madrid to, to get back. I also think that Sociedad and Madrid are the two teams that will finish second, uh, third and fourth, but probably Atletico Madrid will snatch the uh, third spot. Betis, Rayo, Athletic Club going in. I don't think that Villarreal will do it. On the bottom, Almeria is not getting uh, precariously low, but they're all, all, all the other. I mean, Espanyol is not quite off the schneid. Uh, you could even argue up until Girona, all of these teams could get uh, grabbed into the uh, relegation battle. The good news is that one spot is already taken by Elche and Cadiz and Valencia at the moment are the other two on the bottom. Uh, it would be a real disaster if Valencia get relegated at the moment in the expected end. They're just, just above Cadiz, but uh, it's going to be a whole long time. And on top, you see that Atletico is now expected ahead of Real Sociedad. In the next two weeks, we have next week Real Madrid against Atletico Madrid. A pretty big one. Name-wise, Valencia against Real Sociedad is also, also a big one. It's just that... Um, Valencia have been really, really, really bad. And then the week after, again, Valencia would make Barcelona. Valencia, what a classic. No, it's not. Atletico Madrid against Sevilla, what a classic. No, it's not. So it's actually both Betis against Real Madrid that looks like the most fun uh, game. Maybe Rayo against Athletic Club could also do something. We also have the Spanish Cup in between these two rounds. And of course, there's El Clasico in there. So we'll start with a full month of Clasicos with Real Madrid playing Barcelona at home in the first leg. The other one between Osasuna and Athletic Club. Well, that's it from me. Please drop a line below if you want to add anything or you have a question. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I will talk to you soon. Bye. 
Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!